And we're off. So if the coaches are both threatening to play aggressive and attacking football, it should be interesting to see which uh, side does the most attacking on this lovely evening here in gorgeous Chattanooga, the scenic city at Finley Stadium. And we're brought to you tonight by Eleven Sports, our great network that brings all the live games streamed from NISA Games. Tonight's por first portion of the game is sponsored by the Henry Lofts. Chattanooga's familiar black back three there. Dixon, Russell and Spielman. Hoping they'll be uh, solid again this week and not give out of range and too much work to do. They keep the ball away and uh, do what they're supposed to do. Maryland playing quite a high line, trying to play for the offside trap. Here you can see the, uh, the Maryland defenders tracking back with the Chattanooga attackers. That's that first long ball. And Kazak, here he comes. And the duck in, cross it across. Good header away, but he gets it back. Let's see if we can find another gap to get that ball. Here he goes, turning, turning, turning. There it is, coming across. Good defending from Maryland again, able to push that away. Uh, Dawkins number five over there on the far side got to take the throw in and uh, Dengler that very tall defender number 25 able to keep those headed away and his cross is out of the box throw here, put it up in the box for this one. Watch this one. Here we go. Deep into the box. Under the head. Back to Rodriguez. Takes the shot but charged down. And it's going to be pumped all the way back to Reddington but uh, nice attack there. Again, Rodriguez ducking and diving gets caught but carries on. And now the Bobcats time to the ball. There's a lot of ball stealing going on tonight. This is good. Good action there. And Richard Dixon spreading it wide back in the box and again punched out by the Bobcats. Track and Moogie's crosses being intercepted each time so far. Bobcats doesn't try and get something going. Sean muscled up to the job, pushes it away. So Bobcats throw taken quickly. Bobcats spreading the play here, trying to find a gap in Chattanooga's defence where they can come back to them. Way back to the keeper, Christian Corker. He's quite a long way out of the box. Shows great confidence to do that as a goalkeeper to come out of the box, play up the field a little bit. It's a good long ball. Looking for Brown and uh, Banjo getting it out. It's a first corner to Maryland Bobcats. This is a Chick-fil-A corner. Remember Chick-fil-A? Eat more chicken. Man, 
Here they set up for the long corner kick. Edwards up in the box. Chattanooga ready to defend and uh, keep this ball away. Here it comes. It's low, and that's nice clearance there. Kazak with the clearance there. Now here he goes, spreading it out to uh, Tate Robertson, who is outnumbered and then fouled. Clip in the back of the heels there. First free kick to Chattanooga. Taken short. Plays back moving. We're going with the give and goes here. I'll start it all the way back to Spielman. And Dixon. Looking for that long ball, but again, a good read from the Bobcats. And Richard Dixon's intent was red. And he's fouled. Hernandez getting into it a little bit there with uh, the Bobcat midfield. <laughs> Referee telling him to cool down. That's uh, Tahani. Char sorry, Charney. He's working with there. Ball. Trying to be able to intercept that, stop it being too dangerous. And Rodriguez gets tripped. Referee spotted that one. A little height difference between uh, Rodriguez, Rodriguez and Brown there, so that's uh, going to happen, I'm afraid, a couple of times just because of the height difference between those two guys, but uh, both up and okay. Deep ball to Hernandez, a little bit too much on it. Rodriguez cleans up, but uh, out for a throw. Quickly taken by Dixon. Yeah. Ball just getting away from Chattanooga a little bit here. Able to get the pace on those passes right, then it'll start paying off. Interception off Stadder pulled down. Referee calls the foul on that one. That was pretty clear. Shout Hooligans out shouting for a yellow car, but it wasn't that bad a tackle, just uh, a defensive tackle as they like to call them. So Chattanooga with the first free kick of the game at uh, 24 25 yards out. He's going to take this one again. They're going to go for a direct shot, and they're going to go for something clever or a give and go. Lots of options from this point. It's a good scoring distance if you've got a man with a strong right leg, which, of course, we know Chattanooga has. A bit of debate over this one. Who's that one? Dixon and Hofstad are over it. with options on both wings or the short one. In the tenth minute would be a great time to score the opening goal. Let's see what they do. Oh, good save. Nice deflection off the wall there, but uh, Corker up to it and held the wall. So he's calling for a corner because it uh, came off his hands and crossed the line. So a corner at Chattanooga on the right-hand side. This is a Chick-fil-A corner. Eat more chicken. Take Robson over the corner. The option of playing it short, playing it long. He's going to go long. Here it comes. 
floats in and Corker grabs it out of the air. That was a trying to even able to get the end of that one. Corker able to gather it and resume defensive play for the Bobcats. Well, the Ong Chattanooga making the, uh, the first attacks. The Bobcats getting the ball down towards Chattanooga's area and getting that corner at the moment and they're getting of it. So both teams fairly well matched at the moment, which makes it an interesting game. It's a nice ball, but again, Russell there to clean up. The attempt was good, but uh, not the execution from the Bobcats. Shot there, oh good save by Reddington, gets a hand on it and pushes it away. Chattanooga will have a player down on the far side. Maybe a little distraction there looking at that. Sean Hofstadter getting the knock, I think, but he's up and about. So a corner to the Bobcats, their second one of the evening. This is a Chick-fil-A corner, eat more chicken. around and out to the far side, Reddington saved that again, good save, the header wasn't that strong but uh, still dangerous. Okay, we'll watch a replay of that save out of Reddington because that was a cracker, I want to see that again, here it comes, we'll pull the handle and uh, put a nickel in the slot, see if we can play that one again. Down there, Chattanooga with the ball, but it's offside in the uh, Bobcats end. Well, I couldn't find a nickel to make that replay run, folks. Sorry, if I find a nickel, I'll play it back to you again shortly, so hold on. <laughs> you know how to change you need it, do you? Anyway, goal kick to, well, that's a free kick to uh, the Bobcats. Get things back in the play. something happened here we go Chattanooga shut it down again there was Banjo poised to strike there but uh, the defence read it that's a nice ball can Daniel Jackson get something going on his debut as an opener from Chattanooga FC there it is yes Daniel Jackson what a great goal stayed calm and confident slid it past the keeper What a great debut for Daniel Jackson, his first start for the team in the 14th minute. 1-0 Chattanooga FC, absolutely calm and composed. Christian Corker, the uh, goalkeeper, complained about being offside to the referee. Not happy at all. That was a uh, very well-taken goal. Puts Chattanooga in a great place. One up after 15 minutes. See if I can find that nickel again, folks. I know you want to see that replay. Hold on. <laughs> Digging through the purse. Hold on. <laughs> now, let's see what the Bobcats do about that. And they're going to have to come out and uh, not defend quite as closely. That was a uh, good move from Chattanooga. That long ball to Jackson is able to take advantage. That's why Jackson was a really good signing last week. If he can play like that on his debut, that's great. And that long ball again, Juan Hernandez chasing it down. Hernandez 
down there up against Farney. So uh, it'll work hard there. Here's that replay. There it is. That's a great goal. Stayed calm, slipped it past the keeper and uh, didn't panic or hoof it over the top of the, gut of the post. We've seen so many times. All the players get under pressure and get a bit nervous and kick it too hard. Not there. That was great. Chattanooga in a good place tonight. This is better and certainly makes up for last weekend where the uh, really couldn't get too many shots on goal at all. So, uh, yeah, it's a confidence boost we needed. But this is in a good place. Again, that long ball seems to work well. Here it goes again. Cork has to come out and punch it as he's got two CFC attackers on him. Bit of a collision there. One of them goes down. And I think the ball's going to run out for a throw in. The referee's going to stop play right there and then. And a little disagreement there. General Jackson going down and uh, Brett Jones saying the keeper fouled him. There was a little discussion going on and I don't think they're exchanging recipes down there. So the referee's going to have to make sure he gets control of this game before it gets uh, too crazy. Um, I think I mentioned earlier in the first part of the game we had an update on the score from the stump town the Michigan Stars game. That was a nil-nil. Doesn't change anything in the table for us right now. So we'll see if this game has changed their table and puts Chattanooga up a spot or two. But the Bobcats are just looking to get their own three points. That's what their intention was when they came here. We'll see if they can do that. So the referee calms things down a bit. See if uh, how he restarts the game with a drop kick or uh, something else. No VAR here, so we can't get a replay of that and have men 100 miles away decide on the result, which is probably a good thing. Referee is still listening to Corker's complaint. Um, not uh, waving any yellow cards around, but obviously wants to maintain discipline at the same time. So. Gronkhoff chasing there with Banjo, who's come all the way back from the front to get involved in that one. He's the captain, but uh, he's come back to put his is two cents worth as well. But, uh, yep, good play there for Daniel Jackson. Well taken goal. I hope he's got some more in him. That was very good. So we'll restart the game. Oh, here's that collision. Watch this. Yeah, Cork is going for the ball and collides. Just collides with uh, Jackson. That's uh, two players with their eyes on the ball, not their eyes on each other. And those kind of collisions happen a lot in soccer. That uh, can be construed as a foul, depending on which side you're on. And so again, Spielman playing that long ball that paid off so well with Jackson. This time not so good, and Corker gathers it up. Um, but yeah, those long balls over the top seem to be the weakness in the Bobcats. And we will see if uh, Chattanooga employ that or not. Now the foul on the far side. Kazak uh, going a little hard there. Free kick on the far side. The Bobcats taken quickly. Fouls, three apiece. So uh, 20 minutes in, already quite a few fouls. Bobcats attacking on the far side. Here we come into the box. Again, Chattanooga breaking that down. This is good defending from Chattanooga. They're able to stifle these attacks before they really get any steam up. Jackson dispossessed. Good play though from Jackson. Looks like he's lively and ready to really make a mark. Dixon 
try and push that one away. And again, slots out for a corner. No, sorry, slots out for a throw in. What am I saying? Look how taking these very quickly. He's obviously keen to get on the score sheet. Let's see, say, spreading the ball. And the Bobcats putting the pressure on Chattanooga, having a sustained spell here. Into the uh, 21st minute, and I'm not sure they get something out of this. Brown, Brown goes down. Referee plays on. Bobcats coming in from all sides here, left and right. Spielman clears it, and a foul on the far side. Oh, oh the high-speed soccer being played right now. I think we'll keep this up for the rest of the evening. That was Dawkins, the defender, way up there. This portion of the game brought to you by Three Bets. So, Reddington over the free kick. And you'll get a chance to reset after all that frantic play with the Bobcats hammering away trying to get something going. Rodriguez, the uh, Bobcats attempt to spread the ball there. Not getting past him. And again, they're trying to spread that ball to Brown. Keeps it in play this time. Rodriguez all the way back defending. Good defending. Despite the height advantage, they were to take the ball off him and uh, try to win a throw. Good play there. He's having a good dip. He's taking Rodriguez. And uh, definitely a good signing for Chattanooga. One of our youth players coming on through the North Georgia system. Really great to see these young guys stepping up and getting this pro experience. So far, none of the debutants having a, having a bad game at all. Jackson and Rodriguez both making a difference. There's Jackson again. Look at that, cutting through the Bobcats' defence like a knife through butter. Look at him go, and the shot is just charged down right at the end. But he got through three or four defenders, one after the other. Just love to watch that kind of skill. Watch that again here. Rodriguez, there he is. Look at that. Takes it off Brown. He's obviously at least a foot taller than him and just gets away from him. No problem at all. It's a great play. And that's Damon's wrong with an attacker, really. And he's coming back to help defend, which is great. No foul given. Chattanooga to play on. As Rodriguez streaking down the right wing, gets it across, but the cross is not a great one and uh, cleared away by the Bobcats. But the idea was good. Chattanooga not holding back and going for the second goal. It will certainly put them in the depth that should have two goals rather than one, but one is good, and I like that. I think you do at home too. I'm sure there's some Bobcat fans watching up in uh, Maryland, but I'm not quite as happy about that. But uh, nevertheless, hope you're enjoying the game. It's good to have you along. Uh, anybody who likes this level of soccer at NISA is a good guy and a friend of mine. So. Glad you're watching with us. Here's Brown again, getting the cross in. Still been able to punch out of the way. And the Bobcats trying this left wing over and over, seeing if they can break through this side. 
Gray number 47 and a foul given against him. Isaac on the far side, back to Dixon. Oh, back to Russell, sorry. Kasak again, Kasak and Jones combining pretty well down this. We look at that turn from Jones, here he comes. And he's going to say, try to go for this next goal. Is it there is, Dick Jackson. Oh, that's a heavy foul right before he was about to score. That does not look good when he hit the goalpost. Those things are hard. Referee is coming in for a word. Daniel Jackson not backing off there and gets pushed against the goalpost and the goalpost gets shifted. And uh, referee not giving any kind of foul for that, which I was surprised about, because Dengler came in very hard on him after the, they passed the goalkeeper and uh, denied a scoring chance, which I would say is usually a penalty, but... I'm not the referee, you at home may also agree with that, but when the last defender takes down the attacker who's right in front of the goal, it's usually a penalty or a card. Still, the referees letting the game flow, and that's a good thing too. We've had quite a few referees at this level who do like the game to stop and start, and this guy's doing a good job keeping it moving, so we're grateful for that. And that's uh, Daryl, do you want to have to talk about the referee at all, actually? I'd rather not mention them at all and talk about the players in the game. <laughs> so, uh, let's watch out again. What do you think, home folks? Penalty? Not going for the ball throw, was he? he? Pushed him over. But the referee decides not to give anything. Permit play there from the Bobcats, but uh, not able to get through there. Cissé again showing his worth, really coming in hard, just unable to get the ball, and then slides over in the box. throw on the near side, Coach Fuller having a quick word with uh, Richard Dixon to start that off. Here's Rodriguez again, combining well with Hernandez. Nice touch, trying to use Rodriguez's speed to get through, doesn't quite come off and back to Corker. Who uh, passes it back to his defender, doesn't expect it, and Hernandez steals it. Back to Rodriguez, who's not afraid to take on two defenders in one go, and tries to find Jackson. Chattanooga not holding off here. Hernandez, Juanito through to Jones, Hernandez, Dix, Jackson, oh good save from Corker. Chattanooga Bill still loose, Jackson and he puts it over the top of the bar. Unbelievable, but good save from Corker. Could not keep the ball in place, he kept dropping it and Chattanooga nearly pounced and got the second goal. Great action. Crowd loving that one. Really, it's a high-tempo game tonight. I don't know if these guys, these guys can keep this going for the whole 90 minutes, but so far it's been pretty high-tempo. <laughs> it's been great to watch. Let's watch that again. That little sequence here, the pass, and Anders misses it. Jackson, great save from Corker, but can't hold it, and the ball bounces around, and Anders pops it back to Jackson, cannot cannot capitalise on that and put it in the back of the net for the second but so close Chattanooga looking very dangerous there Hernandez now spreads the ball tries to find Jones just cannot quite get there but the idea was good Bobcats having to come back and defend because they know Chattanooga are trying to 
get the ball past them. Do some tired legs at the end of this half, and tell you that they are not stopping. <laughs> it's great to watch. Good shot there, but. Uh, Nothing comes of that one. Gray taking the shot from a long way out. Can't get it on target. Chandler reset. Rankin pushing everybody up. And start off again with a goal kick. 30 minutes played. Still 1 0 to Chattanooga. This portion of the match and the final third of the first half brought to you by EPB Fiber Optics. Love watching Jackson play, he just does not hold off. He's able to get through those guys like a wriggling like a salmon up a screen. Cut back in. He's in, and I think it was offside. It was a great move from Chattanooga, but that was offside. The flag went up on the near side, you couldn't see out of home, but uh, as they went to the byline, like that put them offside and uh, the Bobcats live to fight again. Otherwise, that would have been 2-0. But a good move from Chattanooga, looking dangerous each time they go forward now. Certainly quite a contrast to last weekend's game, where they couldn't really get the attack to gel and couldn't get the passes together. Tonight, they must have worked on that in training because it's really coming together nicely. And the players are in the right place to receive the passes that are being made. And that's a sign of a team that's playing well, like a well-oiled machine. Watched that again, it was offside, but what a good play it was. Hernandez there, pull out the case act, and then an easy strike, but <laughs> nothing doing for the goal. Otherwise, that would have put Jones on the score sheet if that one had counted. from Richard Dixon and holding up the attack and able to get back to Spielman. And again, when I see Dixon and Russell and Spielman together in the back, I always feel pretty confident about Chattanooga's uh, the outcome of the games here. Those three have just made such a great partnership. That's a good clean tackle. No foul given there because it wasn't one. Now, Rodriguez, long, long ball trying to find Hernandez. He's got Jackson Miller as a shot, but uh, Corker up to it. Didn't really get a lot of power behind that one. Yeah, let's have a quick look at that again because that was an interesting play. Just gets in space, makes the turn, the dip of the shoulder, but not enough power to get past Corker. But a good move, making space to shoot and uh, not being closed down by the defence. Now, good save there from Reddington. And play resumes. Foul Chattanooga's way. players to watch is um, the Bobcats new signing Tony Charney he was uh, number 18 by the way he uh, has played in the MLS for New York Red Bulls and was traded out to Toronto um, a couple of years ago and he's been with Columbus Crew and uh, played all over he's been at the Whitecaps, Chicago Fire and FC Edmonton as well so he's had quite a bit of senior experience in MLS and it does show the way he plays but, uh, he's now in his 30s but still plays great soccer so do keep an eye on him while you're watching the game, folks. It's a great ball. Here we go. Chattanooga coming inside again. And a foul given. Yep. A little push there. A 
little push and uh, Kasak got a, got hurt there I think little muscle pull Free kick result of that uh, play. Chattanooga played in the box, but uh, Cork were able to save it in the end. Now, play is on with the uh, Bobcats attacking. And so, again, right across the box, is there a chance to the Bobcats? Chips it up. No, nothing happening there. Just past the goal. But again, Good play from Cissé, making the action happen. Cissé is the danger man here. He's really making the play happen. And uh, need to keep an eye on him, see how he's doing. He is probably um, the one that makes all the attacks happen for the Bobcats. Protection over the free uh, goal kick. Back in the play. Deep into the box. That's around through the midfielders. The Bobcats trying to go for the depth on that one, but again, Chapman will be able to steal it down. Dix there will stop that happening. Great play here, keeping it moving. Good long ball to Hernandez. He's got two on him. He crosses the ball. Dix Jackson's on it. Cannot get hold of it, and it bobbles away. And the Bobcats able to defend that one, but good play there. The Bobcats trying to come forward. Bobson dispossessed and the Bobcats trying to make a break. Going wide down that white the white wing. Here it comes to the way to Cissé again. He's got Banjo inside him. Cissé gets the shot in, but it, he, he closes his foot and it goes to the left of the post. I think Reddy's got that covered, but... Uh, it wasn't actually going that close, close to the goal, but a good chance. Again, Cissé is the man they've got the shut down because he looks dangerous each time he gets the ball. So a goal kicks Chattanooga. Still 1-0 to CFC. Great long ball from Reddington. Hernandez. Got two on him, trying to shut him down because they know he's dangerous. There's a rerun of that uh, shot from Cissé. Nice to see that, but uh, it's about as dangerous as they've got so far tonight. Into the 40th minutes, five minutes of regulation to go, and then a little bit of stoppage time. Probably a couple of minutes stoppage time to add on the end for that incident with the goalkeeper. Rodriguez challenging on Corker and uh, it's clear the referee uh, seen something there yep play goes over it and the advantage we played and the play goes on and again down this left wing see say dispossessed it's like Dixon's reading those and the referee doesn't like him taking that throw quite so fast and in fact it was a throw to the Bobcats, so it looks like definitely makes them bring it back and retake it. And the Bobcats reset. It's Banjo again, he is causing trouble in that midfield, trying to get away. That's to Cissé, can Reddington get it first? Well he can, what a good save. Cissé and Reddington having words. Reddington not happy that Cissé came in pretty hard. And Almost uh, there was an injury, the referee was telling him to cool down a bit. The 
let's see that again. See, so he did come in a bit quick and almost clipped Reddington. Yep, I think he caught him on the hand. Reddington knows he. <laughs> that's dangerous. But, uh, in the end, nobody gets hurt, but it is a close thing. I think it's one of those things where it's a. And he uh, eighths of an inch away from an injury, which is always a, you know, players try to avoid that, obviously. Chatting with good, good air with Krugers and Hammers combining again nicely into a, a nice triangle there and uh, ball back to Reddington. Got Cissé on him. Clears it, stays cool. Now, Hofstadter. Out to Jones. Jones fighting for that ball. Looking very hard on that far side. Chandler generally dominating the uh, the midfield with those clearances and not letting too many get past him. I think Cork may have to change things up to try and get these to his forwards because he's getting some great length from these kicks, but they aren't getting to his forwards. And uh, CFC defence closing him down. Trying to get away again, making another strike. This is a good move. Combining well over the grey, crosses it across the box, and nothing on that at all. Goes way past the goal. Cannot get the, the cross in right at all there. Clock kicking down for the end of the first half. I think the players know they've got to. Got to do something to get the Bobcats on the scoreboard, but Chattanooga determined to keep them out, and so far doing great. Trying to get away again. Most is being played in the midfield. The uh, at this point in the game, each attack is uh, being not shut out, and most of the plays in the middle third of the field. I think neither team wants to make a mistake before half time, certainly, and uh, give the goal away or we'll do something stupid. Quick update on the uh, Detroit City game against San Diego. Detroit City two them up at uh, half time against San Diego, 1904. So that's a good result for Detroit City. Well, when it stays that way, of course. Um, we are playing San Diego on the 18th of September. And before that, we're playing Detroit. So both games, we have interest in both those scores, I guess as we're playing both teams next month. And Chapman is back three, breaking up these attacks, and I think both both sets of players probably looking forward to half-time to get a breather, because it's been fairly intense first half. Right, extra time we're going to have added on yet. I'll keep an eye on the fourth fish and let you know as soon as I see that. So Brown with the throw for the Bobcats. Taking his time that the players get back up there. Again, they're playing it wide left to right. But there's Gray again, and Gray shut down after the Bobcats throw. Two minutes of extra time, folks. So when the clock stops at uh, 45, it means referees keeping time in the field. So it should go through for about 47 minutes. But uh, as we've said many times, the referee keeps the time on the field, not us. So we have to go what he says. 
Brown persevering with those attacks down this, this left wing and he pulls Rodriguez down and referee calls a foul on that. Rodriguez is okay. He's had harder knocks than that. Last few seconds of play here. Rarison with a long free kick from the back of the Chattanooga half. they be deep into the box. At the Bobcats end. Still bouncing around, getting under control there. Jackson and Dengler looking to put pressure on Corker, but Corker's confident. Plays it back out of Dengler. Play. Both teams a little bit subdued at the moment. I think they are looking forward to the half time break. And if they realise they've been pretty much running non stop for 45 minutes. Um, it's not super hot or here, but it's, it's in the uh, high 70s right now, which is really very cool for August in Chattanooga. It's about 20 degrees hotter, so it's pretty good. But uh, still, they haven't run themselves ragged. Both sets of players will probably do with their break. So, as that counts down, brings back to Corker. And the referee blows for half time. So 45 minutes in, one nil chat. He subs along the bench, Coach Fuller. Having a word with them by letting them know the order they'll go in if they get to play. Play back in Chattanooga's half, Spielman out to Dixon. And Bradenton pushed it long. Hernandez gets it. He's got three on him. Can he get round? No, dispossessed. Good, good defending there from Dengler. Be interesting to hear what the uh, Bobcats had to say in their dressing room talk from their coach. Well, any dressing room talk is always interesting, of course, because they will always uh, <laughs> say things they don't say in public. So we'll see what uh, results come from that. Rodriguez, great ball over there, and it's offside. Oh, that's a good move. Good anticipation there. Sending uh, Brett Jones off. Brett Jones really wants to get on that score sheet, you can tell, can't you? That, uh, that Damien Rodriguez, the good soccer eye, as we say, where he's got to anticipate where the players are going to be in a few seconds' time, and he's doing good at doing that. So, play resumes, Bobcats throw on the far side. All the way back to Corker again. This portion of the game brought to you by EPB Fibre Optics. Forward. Good give and go there. Can they get a turn in for a shot? Oh, good defending there. Very good defending by Dixon. Keeping things straight there. Bobcats looking to thread the ball through there and be dangerous. Dawkins is the man, they're number five to watch out for. He's the one threading these passes through to... Uh, Banjo, Brown, Gray. Definitely making a difference. Cissé is pushing up from the midfield too, number 99. On the uh, far side of your screen. We may see more action from those four, I think, as the game goes on. That's a good long ball. It's a little bit too long, though. A bit too much effort from Dengler for Cissé to get to that one. 
we've got uh, Dengler and Farne at the back. Dawkins moving up into the midfield position that he likes to play in. Out right away with a free, uh, free kick. Keep saying free kick. Goal kick. It's not a free kick back there. for a Chattanooga throw on the far side. Pace is a lot slower in the second half than the first half. You've probably seen that. They've, uh, whereas the have to conserve energy as they all went at it hammer and tongs in the first half. Pretty intense. But uh, no subs warming up just yet for one of the team. The Bobcats did bring five subs with them, so they have extra, extra legs if they need them the second half. I imagine as usual after the hour mark we'll start seeing changes. Nothing yet in this early on in the second half. Now the Bobcats looking dangerous. That's a nice ball from Dawkins. Just too much on that one. And since they're able to get it, has a collision with the advertising hoardings. I think he's going to run that off. Again, the long kick from Reddington. Finding Jones, takes a slip and goes down. And Bobcats trying to move things through the middle onto the far side. That's a nice ball out to Gray. Good overlap. Let's see what they do. Gets a cross in and deflects. Off Dixon for a corner. Seat is going to take the corner. Everybody's up for this one. This is a Chick fil A corner. Eat more chicken. Just to let everybody up in the box, the Bobcats, and a good header, and all tipped over the bar by Reddington. Great save. Another Chick-fil-A corner to uh, the Bobcats. But, uh, let's see what they do with this one. They repeat the same thing or they try something else. Referee turn the players to stop shoving. There's an awful lot of shoving going on in the box. And the referee does not like that. There's a huge cluster of about 20 players all in one tiny area. They've all tried to get into an elevator together or something and just crammed it in this tiny area. If he's telling them to stop doing that and give each other a little room. Bobcats have got Dengler up. His height's going to make a difference here in this, uh, this corner kick. He's definitely the tallest of the players on their side, so they want to use him as a, a mark, marksman for the, the kick. Here we go. Once again, Chick-fil-A corner, eat more chicken. That's a low one, pushed away. And Chattanooga out for a throw-in. Good defending. Chattanooga able to spread out again. Push the Bobcats back. Nice long throw into the box. It's high. And Chattanooga head meets it first. Rodriguez tries to clear off the attacker. And the referee gave a card there. Tate Robertson got one, I think, for that little episode in the box where we're all getting in each other's faces so uh, that's uh, again if you have uh, foul vision then uh, 
Go to Kaplan and Wide and McGarvey Ike. They can help with that. And uh, they are the sponsors of our yellow cards tonight as well. <laughs> so, see, Robertson getting the first yellow of the game. And Chattanooga on the attack. Rodriguez gets the shot in. That's a good little shot. Just couldn't get it on target. A little bit uh, to the right, the right hand post, but a good little move there. While I was talking about yellow cards. Quickly back in the play, and the Bobcats trying to get that long ball. That's a good long ball. Chattanooga completely unable to stop that one. Can the Bobcats capitalise on that? Will they shoot? Will they pass? The shot straight into Robinson's arms. No problem there, but a nice move. Again, Bobcats looking a little dangerous. Could not finish that one off. There's a replay of that shot from Rodriguez. Not too far off. Now it's a loose ball. And then there's chasing it. And Bobcats defense able to clear that one. Get it out of danger. And down that left wing comes the Bobcats. They are keen to get down that side. But most times they run into Richard Dixon and he's not going to let them through. And from the other side, it's Dawkins again. Trying to get into space and clear by Hofstadter. Only as far as Dengler. Turns it. That's a good long ball. It's going to run out for a goal kick. Yeah, Denver turning it to, to Cow there, but uh, Sean Russell able to let that one not be dangerous at all. A goal kick to Chattanooga, Reddington over that one. Chattanooga able to defuse any uh, attack so far. Confusion there and a collision, but play goes on. Jackson trying to slip the ball through to Jones. Jones has got it, and referee calls that one back. Calls a foul on that one. There was a bit of pushing and shoving there. So, Cork takes it fast, but Stillman's able to head it back and back into the Bobcats half where it starts its journey back forward once again. that throw in. Bobcat still with the ball on the far side. Trying to make something happen from over there. Can I get the cross in? Still with a chance for a shot. Great. Deflected out. And another corner to the Bobcats. They are certainly putting the pressure on. This is a Chick-fil-A corner. Eat more chicken. The Bobcats trying to turn the screw a little bit on Chattanooga. In swinger coming up high, it meets the Bobcats' head, but it uh, goes out. I think no, they're giving that no, Calf Chattanooga defender. Sorry, folks. So that's one another corner. It certainly puts uh, the Bobcats' head in the corner, score nothing else. And that is another Chick fil A corner. Do not forget to eat more chicken. See how they do it from this side of the field. If they do the same kind of thing, everybody's in the box, everybody moving. And again, Dixon with the head to clear it. Still not cleared. Chattanooga having it bounce around a little bit. Jones back. Okay, Zach, there it goes. Jax Jackson chasing it down, but I think that's going to go out for a throw. And yep. And throw the Bobcats. Again, down that left wing, the Bobcats like that left wing. Seems to be their preferred way to go. 
And back over to Dawkins, having just seven to go. The right wing does have said that, of course. Try and slide it through into the box. Chattanooga leading it and pushing it away. And uh, Bobcats at the top of the D there. Having to come back and reset over and over. And now Cissé, what's he got? That's a great cross. But it's so great, it's too strong. And it goes out for a Chattanooga throw on the far side. Defense there, so trying to find a good way through this. Shannon were able to stifle them each time they get a little close to the 18 yard area. But uh, able to gather themselves back up after the, the ball comes back to them. They're not letting Shannon get a break just yet. Good give and go there. Gray trying to get something going. Now Hofstadter back defending. Hernandez, Rodriguez back. That's a bad cross. Gray gets it, trying to clear it. And a foul, and uh, referee calls that one. Two players going for the ball with a foul given. Looks like Rodriguez getting the knock. No, nope, Jones, sorry. It's Jones getting the knock. He's uh, getting back up. I think he's okay. He's walking that off. We'll see a little, little replay of that in a moment. A lot of press there is definitely a, yeah, plays the man, not the balls, so that's definitely a foul Chattanooga's way. Chattanooga getting ready for his substitution. Number 22 getting ready to come on. Cam Woodfin. And taking off David Rodriguez, had a good hour on the field. No complaints about that at all. Substituted out for Cam Woodfin, number 22. He gets a round of applause from everyone in the stadium. Hopefully for you at home too. He's had a good, good, good debut there. Well played. So fresh legs in that attacking position should be good for Chattanooga. Cam, no stranger to uh, goal scoring and attacking. Now the Bobcats trying to break. Haven't got the men forward. Just outnumbered by blue shirts and uh, cleared away. Spoon coming all the way forward with that one. A little bit out of position. Gets back into where he should be. Defence pushing the uh, attack away there. So Woodfin on the far side with the throw. He's taking that position that Damon Rodriguez had on the right wing. There's an attacking midfielder. Phil Hernandez, Jackson and Jones up front. No, no change in structure just yet from Coach Fuller. In the uh, team, no substitutes coming up yet for the Bobcats. There are a couple of guys warming up, but nobody ready to come on. We've got a score update coming up on the screen in a moment. There it is. So, still nil-nil, Chicago Harris in the Amsterdam in the 21st minute of the nicer game up there. That's running concurrently. There are some of the games going on the West Coast later on tonight too. Obviously we can't give those because they haven't started yet. <laughs> so uh, we'll have some beer on the table later on today or Sunday morning for us. But nothing yet. Now Hernandez got four on him. They know he's a danger man. 
And he's looking to come up and Hernandez is passed, stifled by the Bobcats. Back ball up to Corker. This portion of the game brought to you by Freebets. midfield action here, lots of tussling going on to get that slight advantage now the Bobcats trying to come down the wing and uh, shut down by Dixon over there on the far side once again the Bobcats trying that wing attack but they keep running out of space over the yellow on the yellow line Referee calls a foul for pushing there, Chattanooga's way. Chattanooga get a chance to reset slightly. And over here on the far side out, shot of your camera. Brett Jones is unmarked in his yellow boots. He has no one near him for at least 15 yards. Tons of them. But there's a good shot. Woodfin coming through. Gets past the keeper and the keeper pulls him down. That's got to be a penalty kick and it is. And a card, a red card of a keeper. Oh, drama. Drama in the 65th minute as Corker pulls down Cam Woodfin and gets a red card for his trouble. He does not like that. And is going to the, the referee. Now, what happens to the uh, Bobcats now when their goalkeeper is sent off? That was a bit of drama there, unnecessary. Woodfin got round him, and then the keeper just pulls him down. He gets round him, and the keeper just grabs at him. Doesn't go for the ball, grabs him round the waist and pulls him down. And the, there was coverage, because the keeper had two defenders behind him. He didn't need to do that. But referee immediately with a red card. That's not even in doubt. Doesn't need VAR. Doesn't need anything to know about. It's a red card and a foul you cannot commit. And the keeper has not yet left the field to play, but he has to leave the field and go back to the locker room. With a red card, he is protesting. Won't do him any good. But uh, if he keeps protesting, the uh, referee can take action against the coach or the captain. But the uh, Bobcats players are turning him around saying, you've got to get moving now. You're wasting time by staying on the field. And... Walker being amazingly dramatic and he walked away now he's come back and what's he doing giving Dengler a goodbye hug and now he's going so there's your drama folks tonight let's see that foul again it really was almost unnecessary because he's got two defenders behind him in red shirts and he just grabs Woodfin around the waist and drags him down which is crazy really So, uh, while that's going on, we'll have the, uh, the penalty kick. And I expect that uh, the Bobcats will make the substitution. They are getting the number one, Joel, ready to come on to replace it. That means they'll have to give another play up in the outfield. They'll have to take his place. So, they are bringing on Joel Isiak to replace Corker which is uh, obviously they have to have a keeper for a keeper if they can do it. But then they have to give up a player in the outfield. So let's see who they give up, who they're going to change for. So here's the axe ready to come on, straight off the bench. Good thing they bought a spare keeper. And Banjo is coming off. So they will be down to 10 men by taking off their number 10. A little bit of perfect justice in that, I guess, if you like those kind of things. Um, there's your exchange. Joel Lisiak, number one in goal for Banjo, the striker. That does not put them in a good position, taking off their best striker. And then putting on a cold goalkeeper for a penalty kick. Not cold in the physical sense, just hasn't played yet, so not actually warmed up. Referee is uh, letting things go on. The Bobcats players gathered over the penalty spot. 
They won't do any good, but they're doing that anyway. And the uh, referee needs to get things moving here because he's losing time. So, I'm not sure he's going to take the kick yet. It may be Woodfin himself as he wasn't hurt, just pulled down. Was it Hernandez? No, the referee's blowing his whistle for something else. It looks like Juan Hernandez taking the PK. Referee talking to the players. There seems to be a bit of verbal interchange between the players. What a surprise as they uh, exchange their views. And a bit of psychology going on through trying to disrupt Juan well, Hernandez's concentration, but uh, you know, it will lead to much Juan's uh, cool, calm, and collected, as we all know from these many years playing as CFC and being our captain. Right, we are now underway. Here's the penalty kick. And there it is, Hernandez straight in the goal. Wisiak gets a hand on it, but not enough to stop it. And in the 70th minute, Juan Hernandez makes it 2-0 to Chattanooga. And a penalty kick, so that is 2-0 Chattanooga, a very calmly taken penalty kick. Let's see that again. Very calm, and yeah, good move by Isiak. He does anticipate it well, but it's a strong kick and he can't keep it out of the back of the goal. 2-0 Chattanooga. 70 minutes played, this is a good place to be for Chattanooga. A great confidence boost after last Saturday's game when we were on the end of being two down for a large part of the game. So again, Chattanooga come home, turn it around. This is looking good. Hope you're enjoying this at home. We certainly are here in the studio. <laughs> now, what are the Bobcats going to do? They're going to have to come out on the attack. They do not want to... Uh, come out from uh, three road trip games with one point they'd like to get a bit more than that and they do have the ability to do it so I'm not going to write them off just yet but uh, they are expecting to come home to Maryland with a few more points than this Chattanooga on the other hand very happy as I'm sure you are at home that uh, things are starting to turn around the confidence is back and the, uh, the game player is back Started ducking and diving. Good ball to Jones. Can you keep it in? Yes, you can. And uh, throws Chattanooga. Coach Jock Pudu talking to his players there on the, in the coaching box, getting ready to make some substitutions for the Bobcats. Chattanooga has their bench warming up off camera. You can't see them, but they're on the far side down by the locker room warming up. So we should see some more fresh legs in a moment. They're pushing there. Referee gives the foul. The Bobcats away. But of course, don't forget the Bobcats down to 10 men after that sending off of the keeper. So they have to cover more turf with less people. And although it's only one man, it does make a difference to a team. We've seen that over and over. Whether it's either the, the effort of the extra running or the psychology of having a missing player. And then some teams can come back from that and play great. So it's not necessarily means that they're given that they're gonna play badly. And the Bobcats still fighting for the ball, not quitting. Still four at the back, so they have to have five up front. They should probably give up a defender to come towards the attack if they're gonna get something out of this. And then Chattanooga coming forward, Hernandez playing it now to Jackson. Slows the pace down a little bit. Bobcats obviously pressing the high line, trying to keep that offside trap going if they can.
Bobcats still have Cissé and Gray on the pitch. They can still do a lot of damage if they get to combine, so you don't want to knock them out. Now, here we go. Great ball across. There it is. What a touch in. What a great goal from Jackson. There it is. 3-0. Suddenly the gates are open. Chattanooga scoring like there's no tomorrow. Jackson with goal number three in the 74th minute. We'll watch a real replay of that. Just an easy touch in. Unmarked on the far side. Kasak providing the assist. Uh, as Kasak does so often. And uh, 3-0 Chattanooga FC. This is uh, turning into a cracking game. A substitution, two substitutions, in fact, two Haygood Farms substitutions for the Bobcats. Number 15, number 27 coming on. So we are bringing on Richard Fawkes, number 15. And number 27, Khalid Belogan. For Dawkins and Gray, they're coming off. We'll see how they line up in the field. Uh, so that's Fox's, Fox is going to be on the. Oops, with Falker. The bad rising there. Falker on the 15 on the left wing, replacing Gray. And uh, let's see, Bologan is also a four. No, Bogan's up there. And Gray will take the midfield position. Okay. So there we go. Take Gray's position. Okay, that's where they ended up. Uh, no substitutes coming up just yet. Oh, the Haygood farm substitutes, but those two on fresh legs in the front gives them 15 minutes to do something. Let's see how they do. But three down, really it's time for the Bobcats to throw caution in the wind, just attack, attack, attack. There's Belogan playing that, so that's good ball in. Can they get the give and go? Not quite, almost. Not quite. He's up for Hernandez to chase it, he lets it slide out, they get it back to the keeper, back to... Isiak. Two substitutes come on for Chattanooga in a moment. I can tell you they are going to be Brian Bement and Cutler Coleman coming on for Chattanooga. So a striker and an attacking midfielder. That's a nice ball to Forker. Can you get it across? Wow, that was lucky for Chattanooga there. <laughs> wow. Just not able to get the control to take the shot in front of uh, Reddington. The Logan was right there but could not put it in. Again, oh, no. a the collision there. Dixon and the Logan both going to turn at the same time and turning into each other. This portion of the game, the final section, brought to you by Freebets. Bobcats camping out in Chattanooga's half right now. We really want to get a goal back, plus get at least get a goal back and make the difference to their goal difference, which can uh, change the table too. If points are even, goal difference is the next decider. So even a goal rescued will be better than nothing. Chattanooga now pushing away, a lot of head tennis going on, but it keeps it out. That's a nice ball, and I think that went out. It did, but it came off Chattanooga defender. That is a corner to the Bobcats. Another Chick-fil-A corner. Eat more chicken. Chattanooga waiting for a chance to bring on Bennett and Coleman. I haven't got that chance yet. 
In swing corner. Nice header, but oh, straight into Reddington's waiting hands. That was a nice, fast header. Just not able to get it where they want to get. That was a good play. I don't think the Bobcats are done yet. Chattanooga shouldn't uh, count their chickens, as they say. given Bobcats away by the referee and now he's signalling the substitutes to come on I think he is alright Brian Dement comes on for Brett Jones and that means the Coleman will replace Juan Hernandez So two forwards, Chattanooga not letting off the pressure here. And the photo take off Juan Hernandez, number 10, to a round of applause. And Brett Jones, number 20. Brett Jones in love with the the score sheet tonight after scoring two goals in the last couple of games. But uh, shouldn't be unhappy with that performance tonight. That was very good. Big round of applause for Juan Hernandez, always so popular here. Our oh, beloved captain. Another great game from Juan in the books. All right. Meanwhile, Chattanooga were defending a goal kick. No, a free kick from the Bobcats. Swung into the box. Chattanooga rush forward and push it out. Brian Bement trying to get hold of it. That goes out to Coleman. Fresh legs. And can't quite keep it in. Goes out for a throw to the Bobcats on the far side. Ten minutes of regulation play left. portion of the game brought to you by the Henry Lofts. Bobcats trying to find a gap in Chattanooga's defence. Nothing doing yet and that's a little bit too long. No, keeps it in. Still in play. Chattanooga cool and calm under pressure. And the men stolen away there. A little bit slow to the ball. Brown running himself into the corner there. Good play from him. He's had a good game so far tonight. He's played well. Simply it back in the box. It's still bouncing around. Chattanooga not clearing it as they should. Off Statler going in there and draws a foul. That was a little bit uh, heavy handed. If he's calling him back. We get some magic spray out to mark where the ball goes. Dengler over the ball with a free kick. Referee marking off the 10 yards for the wall. There's his spray. He's not got much spray left in that bottle, I have to say. So it's kind of hard to see what he's putting it, but luckily the top of the 18-yard box is in the same place, so that's all right. So Dengler over the free kick. Chance for the Bobcats to get some more good Bam, good shot, good hard shot. Reddington read it right on the end of that one. Gets his body behind it and a good save. Crowd certainly appreciates that. That's a good, good, solid save from Reddington. Let's see that again. That was a good free kick and a good save. Two both players doing well there. Dengler getting it over the wall with no problems. to come down the right wing Woodfin Jackson trying to set him off doesn't quite come off some tired legs there too I think we might see a few little errors creeping in the last few minutes here as some tired legs out there both sides have run very hard for the entire game don't see any more substitutes just yet there's a couple of guys warming up for the Bobcats I don't know if they'll get some playing time or not after coming this far. 
missed that with a great long throw to Biment, who sets Coleman off. Jackson to Coleman, not a great pass, but Coleman gets it now out to Woodfin. Woodfin crosses it and just play is broken up. Good defending from the Bobcats there to break that up. Because uh, Chattanooga really moving well there. throw there, Woodfin gets the deflections loose hesitates over the ball instead of letting it go and the Bobcats defend it well just a second hesitation there back to the keeper and uh, Isiak able to see that nicely but uh, with 10 men it's hard work for the Bobcats to keep Chattanooga out unless they go full out on attack they really are going to be on the back foot When they're in this position, they really have one attacker up there, which is uh, Logan, who's going to be the, the lone attacker. Maybe a little bit of Cisse's help, but they, uh, they probably want to have players back. That's a good ball, too. And a push in the back from Dengler. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty clear foul. Not going for the ball at all, and just uh, sending Coleman sprawling. Giving Chattanooga a, foul, a free kick in an interesting spot. Let's see that again. Pretty much a straight foul. Doesn't even play the ball. Just shoves him in the back. Really should be a, a card for that kind of foul. But the referee's been trying not to get the card out if he can. But obviously had no choice with the uh, the red he gave. So uh, in the last five minutes of regulation play. in the box, good targets, there it is oh, off the post a great header from Bimins off the post one of the, one of the Bobcats players got in the way of that and is down in the heap in the box, so the referee will stop play while they check him out in case it's a head injury or something serious let's see that again so fast, and whoa a great header where Chattanooga gets to it but it's just off the post the post saves Maryland from four goal. Let's see which player is down. Yeah. Physio take a quick look at him, but he seems to be alright. Doesn't want any treatment. He's making him go off to get looked at by the physio. Check is okay. Because uh, it is number 77. It's Brown again. He's uh, been a real dynamo during the whole game here. So he doesn't want to stop playing now. So Nicholas Brown, quite a player to watch. I'm impressed with his work rate, and he's been very good. Now we have two substitutes coming up for the Bobcats. Number six and number 11 about to come on for them. Let's see who they bring off. So they have, looks like, who have we got here? Pilawe Pato, number six, coming on. And Bryce Orsini, number 11, both midfielders. But they get to come on, so there isn't much left time left to play. So Pato and Orsini waiting patiently. Our play goes on. No problems there. Sean Russell curing out the safety and giving him a chance to make the substitution. Number 26, Possium coming off. For number six, as I say, which is Pato. And then let's see who comes on. Sini comes on from. This is fresh legs in the midfield. Okay, Cow comes off number 22. 
Rossini, number 11, to replace him. So, fresh midfield legs. These guys in there have worked very, very hard this entire game. And have a couple of minutes to make an impact for the Bobcats. But uh, at the moment, uh, mainly going Chattanooga's way. So, a corner kick awarded there. The Bobcats keep the pressure on. This is a Chick fil A corner kick. Eat more chicken. And those two substitutions were Haywood Farm substitutions. If you're looking for alternative recovery methods to ensure you achieve the good and healthy life you deserve, contact Haywood Farms, hand cultivated from Tennessee. Thank you, Haywood Farms, for sponsoring that. That's out for the goal kick, and Chattanooga will not be in a rush to take that. As they run the clock down towards the end of the game. So that Chattanooga getting ready to make two more substitutions. Giving uh, Kai De Silva and uh, Topher Marsh a run out. Late in the game. chance it and good play there from Missy to come and defend that and stop it from getting any more dangerous. Let's see if these guys get to get on the field or not. There should be a little bit of stoppage time, maybe two or three minutes, but not much. Five, oh, five minutes, two and three is five, therefore it's five minutes. That's my commentator's curse. So plenty more time for more action, which is good. So I don't want this game to end, but it's going so well. It's uh, enjoyable to watch. And substitution is being called now by the by the uh, linesman and fourth for holding up the numbers. So the silver coming on for Dixon. And it's like Topher Marshall replaced Daniel Jackson. So three fresh strikers for Chattanooga in the last 15 minutes of the game. Daniel Jackson also had a great debut along with Damon Rodriguez. For that uh, two great goals. That's a fine way to start in the first full, full debut. And you uh, are in the starting 11. Peter Fuller very happy with that. Wasn't that a good signing? Yes, it was. For Marshall into the thick of things straight away. <laughs> and it, uh, play goes on. So, yeah, two great goals from Jackson. They had the, uh, the opening goal and then that last touch in the 74th minute. An hour apart, both goals, goals, but uh, topping and tailing the game and the score. Unless there's one more miss tonight, that was a great play and. The referees he calling an offside, calling an offside about 20 yards out. So Chattanooga into extra time now and uh, just running down the clock. Five minutes. Uh, this is added time added by HHM. Need more time for your business? Contact HHM for all your accounting needs. enjoying this one tonight making a lot of noise and happy to see uh, CFC return to what we call normal play which is winning <laughs> and a bit of leg tangling going on over there referee's trying to separate the players who won't separate themselves Brian Bement and a yellow card and Brian Bement who wouldn't untangle his legs from the defender I'm not sure it was him or the other guy but there appears to be a bit, of, a bit of drama going on there. So that yellow can on caution should be Brian Bement, number 14, in the 91st minute. Got foul vision, Captain White and McGarvey. I care, can help with that.
So second yellow for Chattanooga after we take Robertson's first one. I think Chattanooga will run the clock down there. Chattanooga on the break in, Topher Marshall will try and set Bement off down the left wing this time. He's got support, but he's trying to go on his own, nearly gets there, stumbles over in the box. No call for the penalty there. As he just runs out of legs and runs out of room. But when you're three up, you might as well go for it. Bement again, not afraid to keep tackling back. Squeeze on the Bobcats. Then listens the long ball up and uh, take the marsh all the way back there to clear that one up. Cutler of Coleman gets in there. Now Woodfin, can we get one more break for Chattanooga? Yes, we can. Kazak down the left wing. He's still got speed in those legs. I think he can. That's a nice little turn. Still ducking down. He's got two on him. Denglas coming to help with the uh, defender. And wins corner. So, uh, corner. Goal kick. Yeah. Get the teeth in. It's a free. It's a throw. <laughs> trying to get down there not getting very far against uh, Russell as you would expect trying to turn the box get the shot away nice touch from Woodfin referee trying to play the advantage in fact and that's it he's blown the final whistle so that